Alright guys, so welcome to my channel. So in this video, we're going to look at three topics in Golang. So first one is like Go Routines then channels and then select statements okay right so let's actually like look at this simple function it's a main function that we all know and a go main program always starts with package main followed by some import statements uh, or imp importing libraries basically whatever libraries you libraries you need then you have the main function and you have other functions that you might require right so this main function is what gets executed when you run a go program like this go run main go so you can see that this is actually a sequential execution right so the main function starts then the dummy function gets executed which prints this line and then it prints this end of main uh, string actually right so which is what we are familiar with so if I put like a go in front of this function and run the same program you will only see this end of main because what's happened is this function is now executed independently like like a concurrent process a separate process it is executed independently and this main program is not waiting for this thing to finish and then it basically prints the statements and exits so what if we introduce some wait actually so I'm going to introduce uh, three seconds of wait hopefully that's enough for the the concurrent function to finish so let's give it a try so now we are waiting three seconds and then the, the independent function finished and then or the we, we ran this uh, print statement and then it finished the, the main program you know so that's actually like a pretty simple example of uh, running concurrent go routines concurrent processes so now actually let's look at a slightly uh, more difficult one now when we run like go routines like independently how can we send like once we trigger it how can we send and receive values from this um, you know we have to send values from this main function to this independent thread or independent process that's running and we have to receive uh, values or we, we have to receive things from this independent process right this concurrent process so how can you do that you need a channel actually a channel and this is how you actually you create a channel using a make statement there's another way but this is like basically uh, the, the easy way and uh, use the make statement and then this is the channel and then you you can also put the the type of the channel actually you can define the type of the channel so this channel is of integer type that means we can send and receive only integer values so let's go ahead and run this also so you can see that it prints 10 right what it means is we created the channel we ran this go routine and then we sent a value to in, into the channel the value is 10 and then it goes in here and then it receives the value like this and then which comes into this variable and then we print this value okay so that's how you send and receive uh, values you can have string type channels and you can have other type channels as well okay let's look at another example building on top of this one not only you can send a value to this independent go routine that we trigger we can also receive a value from that that independent pro go routine so how do you do that again main function we're just saying uh, welcome to the main function I'm just adding bells and whistles here so and then I'm defining like a, a variable which is of int type and then just uh, assigning value 10 to that variable creating a channel as usual and we have like a, a dummy function of course now we're very familiar with it and which takes this channel parameter we're passing this input value into this channel and we are receiving something so this is the part that is new in this program right so not only we are sending a value into this channel we are also receiving it so where is it 
coming from actually we are receiving a value from this channel into another variable and that's in the main program it's coming from here actually right so here you can see that this dummy function is now sending a value back into the channel and whoever receives it can utilize that value right so let's go ahead and run it it prints welcome to the main function starts with that one then creating a channel we run an independent go routine then we are sending a value into this channel which is 10 that's what we defined over here and then we are receiving a value from this dummy function and so when the dummy function gets executed it prints that value that it receives from the main program and then it also sends back right so now it takes a 10 and then it multiplies by 2 and that's 20 and that is sent back into this channel and the main program is receiving that value and then putting it in this variable now we are just printing that value actually okay so that's pretty straightforward all right so the next one is kind of building on the same thing as well so let's actually get that program now it's the same thing everything is same I just renamed a few things here I'm importing these functions or sorry these libraries format time and our math random function math random library so you have two routines actually right routine one routine two and in the main function you have two variables which are assigned one and ten respectively two channels right channel one and channel two both are of int type and then we are going to run two routines so you can run any number of routines in parallel so I'm going to trigger two routines which takes these inputs channel channel and we have uh, we are passing in min and max values as well and finally we have the the select statement so we'll come back to the select statement later but basically let's see what these routines are doing and they're basically the same uh, they're doing the same thing so in go actually you need to use the seed function to randomize or to randomly generate a number actually so if you don't use the seed function and you use this rand dot int n it will keep generating the same value actually so you have to kind of randomize the source so you have to use this statement for uh, you know generating random numbers and then this is how you say like okay I w this is the range min like I want some random random number between 1 and 10 okay so this is how you actually generate a random number and what is that random number it's basically assigned to this variable and and that variable is nothing but like the amount of time the the routine is going to sleep actually like remember we use the time dot sleep function before it's the same thing but instead of like hard coding the uh, the time I'm actually like randomly generating a number between 1 and 10 now the select statement is interesting so you it is pretty much like a switch you know if you are familiar with other languages like switch statements like switch case you have a number of cases and a default value so you can also have default value here I don't have it but then you can have a default case as well so whichever case actually uh, evaluates to true is executed right so in this case actually it's a select statement but then whichever channel finishes running first that will be uh, you know it will go into that flow and then it will run whatever code that is under that case actually like if the channel one finishes first or if the routine one finishes first then the channel one will receive back the value and then if the go, go routine two finishes first uh, channel 2 will receive the value first right and then this will complete and this will run right this this code will run right here so let's go ahead and run this as well so it randomly uh, generated these numbers 8 seconds and 5 seconds so as you can 
imagine 5 seconds actually the routine that waited for 5 seconds completed first so this case got executed actually right because it received we're not using that the value that we are receiving from the go routine but it just completed and then it went on to running whatever is code is underneath this case so we can run it a few times so this time again routine one finishes so this is a random thing so this is interesting now both are going to finish let's see like which one is executed first so when we have two routines that finish at the same time then randomly a case is selected so this time routine two was selected now routine one is going to actually run for a long time routine two finishes so this case gets selected and then the code under this case is actually uh, running okay so that's a lot of go for today so i'm going to stop here i hope that was actually clear if you have any questions at all let me know and i'm going to put all these things on my git repo so feel free to use my scripts well thank you i'll see you guys in my uh, other videos do check them out.